Oh. Uh, you, you had interviewed him prior? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and you know, so this guy was actually saving at Barclays, and he was like, okay, I believe in Ghana. Let me just move that money into Gold Coast and... See, see and so he would do everything from Absa to Gold Coast. Yeah, to, 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 to And no, he had over yeah, a million no, no, Ghana he CDs. He lived the good life. He invested in yeah. the in the Gold Coast. Look, yeah. I, I I also oh. used to be with GM Bank as okay. one of yeah because uh, I got introduced to their fund, mm. etc. But you know that even opens up the bigger conversation about how I think post twenty eight especially from the Kufu administration, mm -hmm. from the time that we had Ban Redu as Minister of Finance. Yeah. Uh, we, so rest in all, peace. we all were encouraged that we should buy government instruments, we should yeah. invest, etc. Especially when they did, you know, that um, one Ghana is to one dollar thing, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. So in 2017... No, in 2007. Sorry, 2007. Yeah, I said 2017. You're, you're way ahead of yeah. your time. Yeah. I mean, it's the seven. Two no, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Know, it happens, it happens to me as well. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it, it, it speaks volumes um, about how I don't know I can conclude that we were misled or that we, we've had a breed of politicians who have mismanaged the economy to the point where Bingo. we were educated that the best means by which you can invest if you don't want to take a risk, yeah. is to invest in government assets. Yeah, the risk is very low. And so over time, people move their assets around or move their investment into government assets, mm -hmm. all right? Initially, it used to be um, you go in, invest in the stock market, so people bought um, sure. oil, mm -hmm. Anglo Gold, Ashanti. I remember back in the day from the 2000 era, etc. And then post-2007, Everybody started buying. I, I, I even bought the, ghost, the Gold, Gold Coast, Coast yeah. fund. So you no, lost I, some money? No, I had a friend at the Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. He was a journalist, ah. but he was a finance person. Okay. Started working at the Bank of Ghana and told me, Tali, something they come. So I, I wasn't working fully in the media at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the time post-2000 and 17, when they started this banking, so-called yeah, yeah, yeah. etc. Look, we have had people who have worked hard. Yeah. They earn their monies. Yeah. And because these are instruments or assets of choice, and like in the market that needs to move liquidity around, you make a choice yeah. that I don't want to invest in a trade or an industry. I want to move my money around to make returns. Exactly. Mm. And after the yeah, banking yeah. crisis, people have lost money, not only in Gold Coast, in men's gold, because of so-called regulatory issues. Mm -hmm. Because you remember before um, men's gold will be collapsed, mm -hmm. there were a number of statements from the Bank of yeah, Ghana. And sick. The Bank of Ghana, that's supposed to be the one that regulated the sector, was rather issuing cautions mm -hmm. and not taking action. Yeah. People move their money around. People's money are still there. And we're yeah. talking about people's lives. Now today, you can find that people's monies are still locked up and they don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. The example of gold calls also should give us what portends for the future. Yeah. Exactly. Because people's bonds now? and the not returns the on those bonds that will not be paid for years will yeah. mean that that gentleman, can we put him back in the, on, 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 onto the screen? Could yeah. have but like any, this guy lived a good life. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Go to could his have house. Any, mm. of these, any of these mm. Ghanaians or uh, old people who have invested in these bonds mm. and are demonstrating house. because they are worried. So he and just one of these pensioners getting money for no. medical yeah. for the surgery. and all that. You know, and this you is know? very serious. If we don't think it is serious, I, I, have, I have some but big you know, money. What happens is you keep asking people for money. So... Like they get fed up. Yeah, yeah. But where's the rest of his family? Does he have kids? Does he have yeah, most, most of his people are, you know, abroad. Abroad. You know? And then they, and then he's they the, had gotten he's to a point eldest. where they couldn't fund yeah. his I think that's enough for him, honestly. Oh, but they've done enough. But, but sometimes sometimes it's not even about the yeah. funding or the money yeah. they will give you. Yeah. It's it's the psychological distress that yeah, you face that, that thinking that, that you I used yourself, to own one million yes, Ghana exactly. CDs and all of and a I sudden I own nothing. And you have to yeah. depend on people yeah. for yeah. chicken change. You know, if you be big man where you come down, yeah. it not be the same like you be poor man it's, where you know get money. Yeah. Yeah. If you be yeah. poor man where you day like Fadama, Ashama, yeah. those things, you be yeah. poor. Yeah. So you're you're, you're psyched, psyched up yeah. knowing that if I go to a shaman market, go and do wala tu wala right, sa, right, I'll get money. Right. But if, let's say, you be big man, where you did East Lagoon, yeah. you did Cantonment, yeah. where all of a sudden you, you lose your funds, five million, you true. don't know when your returns will be paid. It's, it's not the same. Yeah. 
because you are you are you are driving in your Range Rover, but you know you're you're you're, you're poor man. It's just you know? like that German billionaire who committed suicide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's, it's, it's never yeah. never I mean, the same. Yeah, and that never... is why people need to take what is happening within the financial sector very, very serious it's because true. people Psychology. are going to lose confidence in the sector because oh, who knows? Have they not already? Yeah. If, oh, you know, because you even see? last time well, I overheard one of the customers, you know, telling the kid that never ever invest in, never. In Ghana? She be, uh, yeah, she wouldn't even let the kid. You, you know, know, back in the day, I interviewed somebody, um, uh, one of the Gold Coast people, and uh, the other time when I was uh, in one of the stations, mm. when I was doing part time there, and she had invested 800 and something thousand. Look at this. And that's almost like, that time now be money. Not be now where when yeah. our money go she down. Hasn't almost anything, almost a million. Not, she, nothing. And no, was asking. Now, almost a million. It's a lot of yeah, that's money. money. But that, the time so they talked, 2017. Like, yeah. so, so what's the plan for these people who have lost their money? Like, I mean, we, we all understand men's goal. They're telling them that yeah. you will not be able to retrieve your money at this point. But what about the Gold Coast Fund? There's well, budgetary allocation in the budget. No, the thing about Goku is that well, then, you know, yeah. you know the 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 group itself has taken the government or the Bank of mm. Ghana to court. Yeah. So it's it's a it's 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 a, a, it's a legal process. issue in yeah. the first place. But the thing is, they trusted in the financial system, mm. a finance minister, uh, a central bank, and now all their investment and life savings have gone to waste. I mean, that's as serious as it. So what do you do? People, when you talk to people, they say go and buy blocks, go and do this. You, you can have buildings and you don't have money. Nobody will offtake the building for you. Which is why I'm sure that when this happened, when the whole collapse of these um, institutions Financial happened, institutions. a lot of people probably thought that then let me go and invest in government bonds. Now you go and invest in government bonds and now government comes back and tells you that unfortunately you're going to have to hold on to the benefits that you're going to make from your account. You have to sign on and replace your old bonds with new bonds. Yeah. And so at this point you're asking yourself, where do you go? And just like, you know, George, George. said, Someone asked their child not to invest in Ghana anymore. And I know that a lot of people are looking for other avenues to invest their monies in outside of this country because they don't trust in the system anymore. Even if it gets to a point where it is restored, would people still trust in the system to want to invest? I doubt it. And that's a major problem for us because government also depends on these bonds to also make some money and do businesses here and there. Yeah, because it, it, it's government it's borrowing from you. washed away the entire financial system. You're lending to government, I mean, basically for a return. Six, seven years. So, so, so that's why I... Particularly yesterday, I, I keenly followed the vetting and all that. I, I, don't, I don't want to be judgmental yet, honestly. But one thing that bothered me was the fact that people who were being vetted versus people on the other side felt like, because Bella and I are friends, you are not supposed to ask, ask me, me certain yeah. types of questions. I remember when Atu Fawson was asking... Brian Champon, that can we trust you to be able to deliver mm. uh, uh, on your mandate as um, a Greek minister? minister yeah. And then he goes, well, you're my friend. You should know this. I studied a little bit of customer service. And what I learned was that your immediate customers, as in the people you, here, you are my immediate customers. So the way I deal with you, the way I interact with you, is what you take out there as testimonials for me. Mm. So you people should be able to speak well or ill of me for the other people outside to be able to believe yeah. you. Now, the fact that you are a friend to me does not mean that when it comes to national issues and your capability of being able to deliver on your mandate as so so and so a person should not depend on the fact that I am cool with Roland. So Roland, you know me, it so why are you matter. asking yeah. me this question? Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't a place for friendship or, or any national issues to be downplayed. These are very serious issues. It happened the same time when um, um, I think Mama Yariga also asked um, Katie, Katie Hammond. Hammond. And yeah. then he says, but you've known me for a long time. So I, I don't understand. These are national issues. And whether we are friends or not, we should be able to convince the people that this positions or this position that you're giving me, I will be able to deliver. You're not even convincing your friends. You're All convincing right. the nation, the entire nation. Yes, it is, yes, it so it has nothing to do with yeah. friendship. Yeah. You, you know, Absolutely nothing know, to we, do with we, friendship. We, we know what the constitution says. And it says that, of course, we have to nominate people and we have to put them. But the question that we have to ask ourselves uh, as Ghanaians, as we have done since 1993, is whether we've put the right people in office or just square pegs in round holes. Because sometimes when you, wa when you watch the proceedings of the appointments committee, it's like 
you know, circle of friends. Because yeah. the constitution yeah. says you take two thirds or you nominate two thirds of these ministers yeah. from the parliament. So, so, so we're a circle of friends. There are three of us it, here. It disturbed so me you, yesterday. You, 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 you treat me with kid glue. Oh, Bella, yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. so, so, you so, so what is yeah. fish farming? Fish uh -huh. farming and you is go ahead and pass then, the no, person. No, I, I don't know. And for me, that fish farming, do we still have the insects? And, and, that's for, why, <clears throat> and that's why everything has been downplayed in this country from health to food, everything that's super All important. Right. I say, yeah, did you are not really on responsible. Oh, he's on the yeah, phone. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, the, he monitor proceedings as the lead parliamentary <sighs> correspondent. Bella. Kamala, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning to you, Roland Bella Ikuke. You sound, you sound exhausted. It must have been a very long day yesterday. Because even as at what, 7 p.m. and beyond, vetting was, was still so underway. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the last nominee that appeared before the, the committee was Stephen, uh, Stephen Asimov, Asimov Batting, who Batting, yeah. has been nominated for the position of the chief tenancy mm. uh, minister. Uh, he ended uh, almost into 9 p.m. Wow. last night. <laughs> Overall, yeah. how was the vetting? Per your, um, you know, your estimation, how did it go? I think my pick out is the fact that, you know, the minority has resolved, you know, to uh, push the agenda of cost sharing that the government has, or the burden sharing that the government has has stressed in these hard economic times. Mm. They. You're beginning to take the side of rather putting it to these appointees. Mind you, yesterday or a day before, they stressed that they they were not going to approve these ministers mm. on conditions that one, if the government is mindful of the hard economic times, mm. there was also the need for them to downsize. Yeah. Now they've also said that they also need to prove to the good people of Ghana that. In as much as they are asking them to bed and share, they must show the way, they must show the commitment to it. So, in mm -hmm. principle, they are disapproving this these nominees and block because they feel that this is increasing the tax and the 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 uh, the cost of taking care of them, the salaries okay. and all that. It's going to be adding up to the economic hardship that a country is going to, and also the fact that there's a need for the government to merge some of the ministries. This call is not just being made by the minority alone, but other people as well. Mm -hmm. So if you listen critically to almost all the questions that members on the NDC minority side have been asking, I would say that about 80 to 85% of it focus primarily on this. Mm -hmm. If you look at the majority side, somebody would say that they, they were just doing a re-examination of some of the issues that some of the minority members have raised. For instance, yeah. let's take Katie Amon. Yeah. Katie Amon was, was so vexed when it comes to the issue of the drillship. And mind mm -hmm. you, it's not a first step. I recall, I mean, as a young reporter, uh, when Katie Amon appeared before the Justice Appeal Commission, uh, or the sole commissioner, Katie Amon wept bitterly when when the issue of the drill ship was brought up and it was basically the reason he appeared before justice about yeah he has said that a lot of information has been banded around the country and the world as though he kt amon was the sole brain behind it yes of course he was the deputy was minister the, exactly time, but he came into office just three months and then the issue of the drill ship came how could he have just been the only one responsible for this so mm. he has sought to clear the issue. And also in the Justice of Power uh, report, it was not stated, for instance, KT Amon said it wasn't stated emphatically that he, KT Amon, should be held liable for it. But then the government white paper, which was issued under the NDC administration, is the one that is asking Iyoko to be able to do that. So KT Amon was so vexed with it. But nonetheless, you can understand the emotion that he posed. Now, on the issue of how he was going to handle the trade ministry. Mm. The posturing that he had, members on the minority, for instance, at a point in time, at the beginning of it, uh, took a, a strong exception to how he is, for want of a better word, quote-unquote, how he's been 
uh, a playful nominee before them. And if you know Katie very well, the theatrics that he is very, very used to, mm. he tried to put that at play as well, that the minority members, especially the leadership that uh, Kese Latofo was in, and especially Kwame Agboja, were incensed about it and didn't want to take any chances whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, you can understand the minority also wants to, um, for want of a better word, please a certain constituent uh, who are demanding much more of them. These are new leaders that they have, and many people are also comparing them to the performance of mm -hmm. the Haruna Idrisu and Muntaka's uh, way of doing a grading. So yeah. they also needed to prove a point that we are not kids and we are not just a walkover. The more reason why Agboja kept insisting that he wanted to act. Some of the questions, yes, I felt that maybe he could have also taken a bit of time mm. to look at it. Especially when you were asking a question from the government white paper. You know, the main report is that the government white paper is the position of the government. Mm. But the Soul Commissioner has a different way of doing it. But okay. if you go on and then you also look at, for instance, Brian Echampo. Brian's take on how he was uh, uh, so sad and... and quite angry about the fact that government has imported a great input, mm -hmm. especially machinery, that are lying at the port, and there hasn't been any commitment to that effect mm. on getting those farm inputs out of the port for the, for the farmers to use. He said he was incensed about it, and he felt that it's one of the things that he's going to be doing once he is approved. He also spoke about the fact that... Um, there is a need for him with the security background that he had okay. to be okay. able to okay. fix their great okay. sector or the ministry to okay. a certain level. Okay. They, they asked him about... Komla, we'll okay have to hold on at him. this point, Komla, if you don't mind, sorry. But I'm sure we'll have you on much later to break it down further for us. And, of course, we'll also be asking at this point, are these... Uh, designates going to be passed as ministers or not. The minority says they are not going to do that until government shows that commitments that they want to cut down on ministers. And uh, a call in the right direction, especially at this point when we really barely have any money to take care of ourselves. So let's see how that goes. Okay. But, well, yeah. Mm. I think we have just a few minutes yeah. to go into Johnny's, Johnny's right. bites yeah. at this point. I think he's ready. So. Okay. All right. Then let's go straight into it. Oh, it's not time yet? No. Oh, okay. Not it's not time. time. I will let Kamla go. Okay. Anyway, I, I mean, Brian De Champon especially, when he was asked about his involvement, quote-unquote, in the Ayawa so West Wagon, and he says that um, the fact that he was a minister at that time does not mean that he's the one that asked the people to go there and doesn't mean that he should be blamed yeah. for it. I, I thought that was a bit of a, a worry, mm. um, if you ask me, especially at this point when we all know what role everybody played at that point mm. and how we arrived at what happened at Ayawa so West Wagon. I would have wished that someone would at least take responsibility to some extent mm. um, for what happened. And to the extent that nothing has been done much to the people that were also, um, you know, listed to have been involved directly in the so West War Gone, double like this. Um, there was a report on him that he should have been prosecuted. Up until now, has that happened? We haven't seen that happen. So I thought that at least people would take responsibility think, for what went wrong I, I think, I think on that day. I think typically for uh, <laughs> commissions of inquiries, the Constitution clearly states what actions also need to be taken when um, the reports are issued. So there all, there's always, as has been done, um, uh, each time paper. there's a there's a commission of inquiry, there's a mm. white paper. Yeah. So um, we know what the white paper was. The government chose to accept some, some. of the recommendations yeah. and chose not to accept some of those recommendations. And because it's a constitutional activity or action, it also means and that we have to take it as it is. Yeah. The white paper then becomes the finality yeah. by way of the action that the government of the day, or the government that did the commissioning, and this one is at the instance of a president, of yeah. course, um, to say that these are the actions I'm going to undertake from the report or the mm. outcome of the commission's work. Um, Brian Champong, I have to say that um, maybe right in a sense mm. because um, he was not fully indicted. Mm. So once you're not indicted, you can say that, well, I didn't know. But the thing is, if we compare that to Europe or elsewhere in a developer, they take responsibility. Exactly. Anyway, Johnny is ready with the bite. Let's, let's cross over.